Hi, I'm Leslie. Welcome to a yoga flow class. So in this class, we'll be building power. This will be a strong intermediate class. So if you're still new to yoga, this is not going to be the most appropriate class for you. You'll require some experience, um, some prior experience of yoga. So a strong power building class, which isn't to say that we're going to move quickly necessarily. It'll, I still tend to do a slower flow but just a few more powerful poses sprinkled in. So the idea with working with um, power or energy in yoga, and the, the term is, is Shakti, is the Sanskrit term, is that we, we use the practice to build power, to build energy, but we don't build it to the point where it just scatters and then leaks out. We want to try to build it and then maintain that energy that we've created. So we want to work with some bandhas, we want to work with the breath, and we're also going to pause um, in between some of the more powerful practices so that we can contain the energy that we built and to maintain that energy. So there'll be some kriyas worked into this practice. Kriyas are purifying ex uh, exercises, and they also help to build some, some power. So we're going to start off with a kriya, which is the breath of fire. This comes from Kundalini Yoga. So first we're going to start with a smooth, even breath. So with finding your comfortable seat, you can sit on a bolster or a folded blanket. You'll let your spine rise up tall and you'll close your eyes. So before we start really moving the breath in a more powerful way, we first want to find our proper breath our smooth, even, controlled breath. And breath of fire, or this um, Kapalabhati breath, we breathe in and out of the nose, but it's a forceful exhalation and it's a passive inhalation. So we'll start off with just our hands on our legs. And just to find this, um, the basics of this breath before we add on to it. So it's an, an inhalation here. And to exhale, it's like you're pulling your abdominal wall, you're pushing it back, you thrust it back, and the air just gets pushed out of your lungs and through your nose. So inhale, and exhale is active. <laughs> inhale, passive, you just let everything relax on the inhale, and an active exhalation. <laughs> so keep going like this. You should feel your abdominal muscles doing some work on the exhalation especially the, uh, the abdominal muscles between your two front hip points are drawing in and thrusting back. Your spine stays long. One more. And then inhale. And then just breathe normally. Close your eyes here. Just notice how that felt. So that really cleared out the lungs possibly your sinuses in <laughs> nasal cavity as well. And the idea with that breath is it just starts to really pump the energy. That's called also skull shining breath, so it moves cerebral spinal fluid. We're going to do that one more time, and then we're going to add the arms. So you might want to speed it up a little bit, but if that creates any anxiety or it's uncomfortable, then just go back to a normal breath. And oh, by the way, there are contraindications for this breath. If you are pregnant, if you've had abdominal surgery recently, you're not going to want to do this breath. And if you have high blood pressure that is not being controlled, you don't want to do this breath. Okay? So you have the option to keep it slow or to speed it up. So if you're watching me, you'll see that my abdomen is actively pushing back on the exhale. There's quite a bit of work going on. You can speed it up if you like. Let's go five more. And then just find a normal breath. Close your eyes. Notice the effects of this breath. And then the last one, we're going to use the arms. And this is going to start to get really energetic now. So bring your arms out into a, about a 60 degree angle. Your arms are straight. Now, on the, this will be the inhale with your arms straight, and then as you exhale, you make fists and you pull your elbows in. So inhale, arms straight, exhale, pull your elbows in, and then we'll find that active breath work that we did. 
And we'll do this for quite a while, almost a minute. If this starts to feel like it's just too much for you, maybe it's too distracting or it's not comfortable, find a normal breath. Keep the spine long. Use your abdominal muscles on the exhale. Let's go 20 more seconds. Two more breaths. Inhale, reach the arms up. Make fists, but extend your thumbs, and then bring your thumbs together over your head. Arms are straight, tuck your chin, hold the breath in. So you're holding on the inhale in, with the chin tucked, lift the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha. And then exhale and release your arms down. Close your eyes again and notice the effects of what you just did. Your shoulders should feel pretty warm now. Your core muscles should be pretty warm now. You should feel more energy built up in the torso, in the arms. Just notice. And then let's come on to all fours. By the way, we will be working on some handstands a little bit later. So for now, let's just come on to all fours. Keep your eyes closed and just start to arch and around through the spine. So you're still in observation mode. You're still noticing the effects of all of that active breath work that we just did when we were seated. You're still noticing how that has shifted the energy internally. Shoulder blades move down the back on the inhale. Exhale, you widen the shoulder blades on the back. And then come to neutral tabletop. We're going to warm up through the wrists. So let's inhale and lift the heels of your hands. So you're on what's called ridge tops. You're on basically the fingers, but the palms are, list, are lifted. And then come all the way up onto the finger pads. And then lower the fingers down and then the palms down. Lift the palms, come up on the finger pads, lower the fingers, and then the palms. And then keep going like this. Inhale as you come up, exhale as you come down. Just getting, working on strengthening through the hands and the wrists and also stretching out through the hands. And do one more. All right, good. Come up and sit back on your heels and interlace the fingers behind you and push the knuckles down. Try to press the palms in towards each other. And then lower your hands back down. We're going to stretch through the feet. Walk your knees back a little bit. Tops of the feet are down. We're going to push into the tops of the feet and lift the knees. So you're pushing straight down on the tops of the feet. And then send your hips back. So your shins will lift a little higher. And then shift forward, shoulders over wrists. You're late. Let's move the legs back to straight. So you're still on the tops of the feet. And then bend the knees and send your hips back and shift forward, shoulders over your fingertips. So go back and forth like this. Just working through, st we're stretching through the ankles, through the tops of the feet. Do one more like this, shifting forward on the inhale. And exhale, shift back, lower the knees down. Curl your toes under and sit back on your heels. And now we're stretching the feet the other way, reaching your arms up overhead. Cross your wrists and press your palms into each other. And then just side bend. Go swaying from side to side, free reaching your fingertips up and pushing the palms into each other. We're stretching the shoulders and the feet at the same time. And then look up and cross your wrists the other way and sway from side to side. As if you're drawing a line on the ceiling with your fingers, push the palms together. Come up, inhale, pull the arms back, heart is forward, hips are forward, and exhale, hands come down to the floor and come into downward facing dog. Just move through some modified Surya Namaskar C's. So inhale, your right leg rises behind you, step the right foot forward, lower the back knee down. Inhale, the arms reach up on Janayasana. Exhale, hands come down to the floor, step back to downward facing dog. 
Inhale here in Downward Dog. Exhale, lower the knees down and bring the whole front body down to the floor. Inhale, come up to Cobra. Exhale, back to Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, your left leg rises behind you. Step the left foot between the hands, lower the right knee. Inhale, the arms rise up on Janayasana. Exhale, hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Inhale here. Exhale, lower the knees down, bring the front body down to the floor. Inhale to Cobra Pose, shoulders roll back. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. One more time each side. Right leg rises, inhale. Let's add on to this. So lift the top hip and bend the top knee. Scorpion Dog. Straighten the legs, square off your hips, inhale. Step the right foot between the hands, lower the back knee, inhale. The arms reach up to the sky. Exhale, shift your hips back and pull the arms back behind you like you're taking a big bow to your adoring audience. Inhale, come back forward into the front foot, bend the knee, arms up. Exhale, pull your arms back, shift your hips back, straighten the right leg. Last time, inhale forward and up with the arms. Exhale, shift back like a half splits almost. Inhale forward and up with the arms, front knee is bent, and place the hands down on the floor. Downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale here in downward dog. Exhale, lower the knees, and then the chest down, and then the chin. Rise up to cobra on the inhale. Downward facing dog on the exhale. Lift the left leg behind you, open the hip, and bend the knee. Scorpion dog. Straighten the legs, square off the hips. Exhale, step the left foot between the hands, lower the back knee down. Inhale, the arms reach up on Janayasana. Exhale, take the arms back, your palms face forward, your hips move back, your left leg straightens. And then shift forward into the front foot, sweep the arms forward and up, inhale. Exhale, take a bow. And again, inhale forward and up, reach up, last time like this. Exhale, straightening the left leg. Inhale, bend the front knee, reach the arms up. And then place the hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale here, exhale, knees come down, bring the chest down between the hands, lower the chin, lower the hips, inhale, cobra pose, and downward facing dog. Good. With the head turn from side to side here, in downward dog, reach your heels back. Can the inner heels just disappear behind your feet? Mm. And then bring the head back to center. Look forward and walk the feet forward to the top of the mat. Fold and Uttanasana, stay here for a moment. Mm. Check that the four corners of your feet are pressing down, your toes are reaching forward. Your toes are spread. All right, and then bring your feet a little wider, turn the toes out and come down into a squat. We're gonna work on another Kriya. So this one is just two poses. We just come in and out of a squat and a forward fold. But we're gonna move with the breath. So I'll show you what it looks like and I'll show you what the options are as well. So as you exhale, you straighten your legs. You can parallel your feet, but keep your feet a little bit wider. And as you inhale, you lift your heels and you lower your hips into a squat. My heels are up here. So this is the exhale, forward fold, heels are down, and the inhale is the squat. And then we're gonna speed that up and we're gonna move with the breath. So your options are to go from forward fold to halfway. Exhale, forward fold, inhale, halfway, okay? or and or you can also slow slow it down. I'm gonna be doing this quickly. You can do this slow down. We're going to do about 30 rounds. That should really heat up the thighs quite a lot. And I recommend doing this with your eyes closed, otherwise you might get dizzy, especially if you're going at the pace that I'm going, which will be pretty quick, okay? Got it? It's just those two poses, but we're moving with the breath. So inhale here and exhale. 
This is two. We're going to do 30. Speed it up a little bit. That's it. Pumping breath. Active breath. That's 10. So a third of the way there. Halfway there. Really push the air out on the exhale. Let's do 10 more. Five more. Three, two, and one. Stay in the forward fold. Heel toe your feet to hips distance apart. Stay in your forward fold. Just let the head be heavy here. Keep the eyes closed. That really builds energy. So I want you to just contain it here. I want not, not holding your breath. You're still breathing smoothly. Breathe through the nose. So we're just not getting up right away and moving around and scattering that energy around. Come to downward dog. This is kind of a grounding pose here. So what we did was we just got some energy moving upward and outward and now we're grounding it. Grounding the energy. Mm. Let's do one more breath here. And then look forward and walk your feet to the top of the mat. Again, forward fold and push down into the feet and let's rise up to stand. Reach up through the arms. Inhale. If you're a little dizzy after what we did before, you can always stay back in your forward fold. We're going to move through some half sun salutations here. So inhale your arms. Reach up. Exhale. Come forward and down. Bend your knees. Lengthen halfway. Inhale. Exhale and fold. Keep an ujjayi breath. Slight constriction to the back of the throat. Inhale. Rise up. Hands to the heart. Exhale. Firm the thighs. Lift the kneecaps. But don't lock the back of the knees. Lower the arms. Exhale. Push down into the feet. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Come forward and down. Ujjayi breath. Remember, inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Push into the feet. Inhale, rise up. Arms reach up. And hands to the heart. Exhale, pause here. Keep the ujjayi breath. Just stand in mountain pose for a moment. We're going to intentionally take these pauses from time to time. Once we build energy up, we build the energy up, and then you contain it. We pause it. We work with it. You see what's happening there, what the shift has, what it feels like to have shifted the energy. You just keep that in. So that's what we're doing with these pauses. Let's bring the feet together to touch. Bend the knees, chair pose. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. We're going to twist from side to side with the breath. So exhale, twist to the right. Tap the left elbow to the right thigh. Inhale, come back through center in chair. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right. You're just tapping opposite elbow to thigh. Inhale and tap. Inhale. So don't, it's not so much about moving the elbow over towards your thigh. It's more about twisting and the elbow just lands at the thigh. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Next time you come to the right, you're going to stay there. So twist to the right, stay here. Send your sit bones back. You're in chair pose. Weight is in your heels. You should be light in the toes. And we're going to balance on the right foot. So shift the weight to the right foot. Lift your left heel. Pin the inner knees together. And then float your left foot. So the shin is hovering parallel to the floor. And with control, send your left foot to the back of the mat and find a lunge. You're still in a twist. You're still pushing the palms into each other. You're still turning your heart towards your thumbs. And we're going to find a warrior two facing the other way. So look down, reach your right arm back, your left arm forward, and windmill up and around to warrior two. Lower your back, heel. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, straighten your front leg, triangle pose. 
Bend your front knee, inhale, reverse your warrior. We're just going to do three of these. Exhale, triangle pose. Inhale, bend the front knee, reverse your warrior. And next time we come into triangle pose, we're going to hold it. Hand to shin. If you want to do hand on floor, that's fine. But if it feels, if that creates compression in your body, no shame in having your hand a little higher up the leg. Reach out along through your limbs. Bring your fingers together of your top hand and then reach your fingertips up towards the ceiling even more. Push the back foot into the floor, breathe. Top hand on the hip, half moon pose. Bend your front knee, bring the weight into the right foot, float the left leg back. Firm the outer right hip muscles. Flex the left ankle, spread the toes. One more breath here. And then send your left foot to the back of the mat. Let's just come to a lunge. Lower the left hand, level out your hips. Both hands down, runner's lunge. And then place the left hand down so you're preparing for side plank. Spread the fingers, bring the wrist just a tiny bit forward of, forward of the shoulder. Lower the outer edge of your left foot down, step the right foot back. You're going to rotate your left biceps forward as you come into side plank. Lift your hips up high, reach your right fingertips up higher towards the ceiling, flex your ankles. And then let's lower the right hand down into plank pose. Pause here. If you want to do a vinyasa, you can, or we can meet in down dog. So vinyasa is you lower chaturanga, hover the head of the arm bones, inhale to upward facing dog, shoulders back, exhale to downward facing dog. Hmm. Lift your right leg into the air. Step the right foot between your hands. We're going to come into a pistol squat. I'm going to show you an option. So let's try it um, both ways. And if you don't like the pistol squat, I'll show you the option. So your left leg is going to come all the way under you. You grab the left foot with the right hand and lower the hips so they're just hovering into a squat. You're on your right foot and your left leg is forward. And then you send your left leg back again. So if that just didn't work for you, your option is to tuck the left knee behind the right knee and then send the left leg back. So let's do that. Three more times. So left leg comes under, grab the foot with the right hand, send the leg forward, hover the hips, and then send the left leg back. That's three. Leg forward, step back two. Left leg comes under you and forward. Step back one. Come into pistol squat. Let's all meet there. Can you balance on your right foot? Maybe both hands hold your left foot. Everything is hovering except the right foot. And then lower your bum down. Come into boat pose. I'm just going to come to the middle of my mat. Boat pose. Inhale here. Exhale, half boat. Inhale to boat. Exhale, half boat. Inhale to boat. Exhale, half boat. We're going to come up to a squat. So maybe you rock up without your hands or use the hands if you need to. So to rock up into a squat, I'm going to tuck my feet under me, shift my body weight forward, and pop up onto my feet. Crow pose. Remember, this is optional. Everything is optional. If you want to stay here and skip crow, stay in your squat. Otherwise, hands to the floor. Spread your hands. Hands are shoulder distance apart. Lift your heels. Bring the knees high up on the triceps. Shift forward. And can you float your feet? From here, you have the option of jumping back to Chaturanga or you lower the feet first and then you step back, your choice. If you want to jump back, lift your hips high, lift your legs and your feet high, float your legs back, Chaturanga, lower your upper body, inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Find your breath here. Lower your knees down to the floor. Before we do the other side, we're going to do a Kriya. This is a short one, but it's a powerful one for the shoulders and the triceps. So we're going to do five rounds. It's going to feel like a vinyasa, but it's the sequence a little differently. So you might want to watch the first one, and then we'll do five of, the, five of these together. 
So it starts in down dog. This is the exhale. Inhale, we come into an up dog with the toes curled under. Exhale to chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Toes are still curl curled under. And exhale to down dog. All right? So let's do five of those. Let's meet in downward dog. And as here we go. So exhale here. Inhale, roll forward into up dog. Toes are curled under. Exhale to chaturanga. Hover the head of the arm bones. Inhale to upward dog. Shoulders back. Exhale to down dog. That's one. Inhale to upward facing dog. Shoulders back. Exhale, chaturanga. Hover your thighs. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. That's two. And roll into up dog. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. That's three. Upward facing dog. Inhale, shoulders back. Exhale, chaturanga, hover head of the arm bones. Inhale, up dog. Triceps are burning now. Downward dog, exhale. That's four. One more to go. Inhale, upward facing dog. Chaturanga, don't let the shoulders slouch down. Inhale, up dog. Downward dog, you're done. Mm. Lower your knees down. Sit back on your heels, interlace the fingers behind you, and push your knuckles down. Try to push the palms towards each other. This should feel nice on your wrists. Just stretching out the wrists after what we just did. So I know we still need to do that whole standing sequence on the left side. We'll get, we're getting there. We just took a little bit of a intermission. Reach the right arm up, bend the elbow, hold the elbow with your left hand, and pull your our elbow in towards your head and the forearm down. So hopefully feeling a stretch through the tricep and the shoulder on the right side. And then let's lower that arm and switch other side. Left elbow up, hold the elbow, hold the elbow with your other hand. So you're using the right thumb to push the forearm down the back as you pull the arm in towards your head and then release that stretch 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 arms back and then downward dog all right here we go as promised other side walk your feet forward lengthen halfway inhale forward fold exhale stay here for another breath and exhale Push down into the feet. Let's rise up to stand. Arms reach up at the top. And hands to the heart. Okay. Feet together. Bend your knees. Chair pose. Arms reach up. Bring the hands to the heart. Exhale. Stay here on the inhale. Twist to the left. Inhale center. Exhale to the right. Keep going back and forth like this. Exhaling as you twist. Can you bring the elbow to the thigh? Can it tap down? Try not to lower the elbow down. You're only moving from the waistline. Pin the inner knees together. One more time to each side. Next time you end up twisting to the left, stay here. Hook the elbow just outside of the thigh. Reach your sit bones back, push the palms into each other, and rotate your heart up towards your thumbs. We're going to try to balance on the left foot. So shift the weight over your left foot, lift the heel of the right foot, pin the inner knees together, and then float the right foot up off the floor. Slowly take the right foot to the back of the mat. Stay in the twist. You're in a lunge now. We're going to rotate around to warrior two. So reach your left arm back, right arm forward, windmill up and around, lower the back heel, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Straighten the front leg, triangle pose, exhale. Inhale, bend the front knee, reverse your warrior. Exhale, straighten the front leg, triangle pose. One more time. Inhale, bend the front knee, reach up and back. Left knee points forward. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Triangle pose. Be here for a moment. Reach out long through your arms. Firm your outer left 
hip muscles. So really wrap the hip muscles around the pelvic bone structure. Lengthen the spine. Half moon pose. Top hand to the hip, bend the left knee. Shift the weight into the left foot and take your right leg back. Reach the right arm up. Get an external rotation in your top arm. So the palm of your right hand is facing out to the right. And then you'll step the right foot back with control. Lower the right hand, runner's lunge. And then place the right hand under the shoulder. The wrist is under the shoulder, maybe even very slightly forward of the shoulder. Take your left arm up. Spread the fingers of the right hand. And then come to the outer edge of the right foot and step your left foot back to side plank. And then automatically rotate the right biceps forward. Reach the hips up. Reach up through the top arm. Flex the feet. Firm your legs. And on the exhale, both hands to the floor, plank pose. I know the shoulders are probably tired, so you can skip the vinyasa or do one more chaturanga. Upward dog on the inhale, downward dog on the exhale. All right, wrapping this one up, take the left leg up into the air behind you. Step the left foot between your hands. So we're going to do four of these pistol squats to lunge. And remember, you can always tuck the right knee behind the left knee as an option. So we'll do four of these, and then we'll end up in a pistol squat. So your right leg comes under you. Grab the foot with the left hand and send the right leg forward, lowering the hips, and then send the right leg back to a lunge. You can reach the left arm forward in the lunge, and then grab the foot as the leg comes under you. Take the leg forward and send the left leg back. That's two. Grab the foot under you, extend it forward, and then reach it back to a lunge. One more, and then we'll hold this one pistol squat. With the right leg forward, maybe both hands hold on to the right foot, and you're just hovering the hips. Lower your hips all the way down, coming into boat pose. I'm going to just come into the center of the mat here. Boat pose, inhale, exhale, half boat. Inhale to boat. Exhale, half boat. Inhale up. Exhale down. Remember, we're going to come up into a squat, so inhale to boat. If you need to get some momentum to come up to, into a squat without using your hands, you can try rocking back, get some momentum, tuck the feet under you, and then come up into a squat. Just be here for a moment. We're going to counterpose the wrist because we are going to work on handstands next. So push the palms into each other and the fingers point down. So the back of the knuckles are pushing against each other. Just stretching through the front of the wrist. I know we're skipping crow pose on this side. That's intentional because we are going to do handstands, which are considered an arm balance. So we got another, we got more arm balances to go. <laughs> And then just let your fingers roll forward and then in towards you, and then out, away from you, and then in towards you. So you're kind of rolling from one knuckle to another, kind of like gears. Hmm. Lower your hands to the floor, straighten your legs, forward fold. Heel toe the feet into hips distance apart. Let the head soften down. Hmm. And then push into the feet, bend the knees, and let's rise on up to stand. Arms reach up at the very top. And hands together at the heart. Here's our plan for handstands. I recommend having some wall space, some empty wall space that isn't covered in artwork. Um, we'll use the wall as a prop. And we're going to come from a lunge, a crescent lunge, to a handstand. And this actually helps a little bit in getting some momentum. So if you want to take a look here, I'll show you what it looks like. You want to start by first positioning your hands in the right spot for your handstand. And it's going to look like this. So I'm going to place the hands about where I want them for a handstand, kick up, come back to a lunge. As soon as the foot comes down, you come up into a crescent, and you place the hands right back down and kick up, 
and come right back down into a crescent. And eventually, you're gonna to wanna to switch your feet both times. So if both of my feet come up, I'm gonna take the other foot down first, and now I'm in a crescent lunge the other way. So join me when you're ready. Find your wall space. You're gonna start with where you want your hands positioned, and then that's where you're gonna place one foot down and come up into crescent. And then when your hands come down, you just kick up into handstand, and then the other foot comes down first. And now you'll be in a crescent lunge the other way. So this is all control. You're not just wildly kicking yourself up. You place the hands down, you use the momentum of your back leg to push up, both feet up to the wall, and then the other foot comes down first. And now you're in crescent warrior the other way. So let's do this a few more times. Exhale down, kick up, mm. inhale when you're up. Exhale, the other foot comes down. Inhale up to crescent. Exhale down, kick up, inhale when you're up. Lower the other foot down, exhale. Inhale to crescent. Let's do two more. Exhale down, kick up. Oops, <laughs> I didn't wanna come up this time. <laughs> so exhale, come back down, foot down, inhale to crescent. Exhale, hands down, kick up, there we go. Switch your leg so the other one comes down, and then you're in crescent, and step to the top of the mat. That got some breath going, hands to the heart. Let's do one more Kriya. So from standing, just step one foot out to the side, doesn't matter which foot, and come into a horse pose, or it's also called goddess pose. So your knees are turned out, your toes are turned out, and you're bent in the knees. Take your arms out into a cactus pose. So this is simple. All we're going to do is twist. But I want to be specific with the breath here because this is a Kriya. Okay, so I'm not going to mirror you. You're going to inhale to the left and exhale to the right. Keep your knees widening. Keep your elbows at about shoulder height. And here we go. So inhale left, exhale right, and then just keep going. Keep the spine elongated. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we really feel some heat building in the core. This is a lot of oblique work and leg work. Your shoulders are doing a little bit of work, just keeping your arms up. You're just inhaling left, exhaling right. You can close your eyes if you feel a little dizzy or you can just look forward rather than looking side to side. All right, let's go for four, three, two, and one. Straighten the legs, parallel your feet, Fold it forward. Have your feet nice and wide. Inner edges of your feet are parallel. Just folding yourself down and rest. Mm. Lift the flesh of your inner thighs up. And on the exhale, you're lifting the abdomen. You're hollowing out the core. Even lifting the pelvic floor on the exhale. All right, let's lengthen halfway forward, inhale. Just walk your hands to the front of the mat, find a lunge, and come to downward dog. One more power move. Lower the knees down, come onto your belly. Come up into Sphinx. This is not the power move. <laughs> We're gonna prep the spine for back bends and the kriya is to do bow pose danyarasana but to let the body rock back and forth and we do that with the breath so i'm just describing it now but we're going to do a couple more warm-ups before we do the pose so from sphinx let's lower the chest back down and we'll do a cobra pose so bring the fingertips under the shoulders roll the shoulders back inhale to cobra Exhale down. 
Keep the shoulders back. Inhale, lift. Exhale down. Try not to squeeze the glutes a lot. Think of only like 50% squeezing them. Inhale, lift. I don't want to create compression around the sacrum. Exhale down. Okay, good. Now, bow pose. If this pose doesn't work for you, just stay in Cobra and you won't be doing the Kriya. Otherwise, bend the knees, reach back for the tops of the feet or the ankles. I like the ankles because then I can flex the ankles and I get some more power in my legs and spread the toes here. So you're going to lift up on the inhale, push the feet back into the hands, start pumping the breath. And as you do that, you'll notice as you inhale, you rock back towards the thighs. And as you exhale, you rock forward towards the chest. So it's a sharp, active breath. It's still complete. It's just quicker and sharper. Spread the toes. Let's go five, three, one, lower, down, stack the hands under your forehead, let everything rest down, let your heels turn out, relax your glutes, relax your shoulders, breathe normally. You really got some things moving up and down the spine. So just notice, your eyes are closed here, you're just noticing. Stay down where you are, just bend the knees and let the shins windshield wiper from side to side so they're moving in unison. Your, your legs are just slightly separated. Just letting this should be easy, it should feel nice on the low back and the hips. When you've evened out left to right, then lower your shins back down. And from here, you're just going to roll over onto your back however you like. You can either flip yourself around or you can come to the other, face the other side of your mat and then come onto your back, whatever you like. Just come onto your back. Mm. Let's reach the legs up into the air and the arms and then circle your ankles and your wrists. So both your arms and legs are up in the vertical plane, circling, circling. Circle them the other way. Mm -hmm. Take your legs wide, keep them long and extended, but take them out wide and let your hands be like sandbags. Your hands are just pressing down about the middle of the inner thighs. One more breath here. Bend your knees. Take the hands to the outer knees and draw your knees together. Let's hug the right leg in. So interlace the fingers around the shin and extend your left leg forward. Hug the right leg in closely. Push out through the left heel. So make your left leg longer. Squeeze in tight through the right side. And then half happy baby. Let's release your hands from the shin. Bring your knee to bend about 90 degrees and hold the outer edge of the right foot. And you're using your hand to pull the knee down towards the armpit. And if you'd like, extend the left arm back. So you're really long on the left side. And you're pressing the leg down on the right side. Bring the left arm back down by your side. Lift your head and shoulders, and let's move the shin, the right shin, sort of across over to the, the foot is coming over to the left. So we're coming into a baby cradle. So you can always stay here with your right hand holding the knee and the left hand holding the foot. As an option, you can maybe tuck the right arm under the shin here, or baby cradle by placing the right foot in the crease of the left elbow, and you're 
The right arm comes around the knee and you interlace your fingers just around the outer shin. If you're really flexible, you might be able to lay all the way back on the floor here. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> Still, that's just how my body is. I've been doing this for 21 years, yoga. This is just the way that my body is, so it's okay. <laughs> We're all different. And we'll release the right side. Come all the way down and other side. Start by just hugging the left knee in. Interlace the fingers around the shin and extend the right leg forward. Really hug the left side in close. We're giving the ab abdominal organs on the left side of the body a, a nice big squeeze. And then half happy baby on the left side, hold the outer edge of the foot. So the shin is vertical, the knee is pressing down, reach the right arm back. And then get long from the right wrist through the ankle, reach the right side of your body long, lengthen out. One more breath here. And then lift your head, lift your shoulders. You're going to externally rotate your left leg from the hip. So the shin is moving more over the chest. The foot is coming over to the right. Keep the ankle flexed. You can just stay holding on to the shin and the foot with your hands here. If baby cradle is just not comfortable for you. Or you bring the left foot to the inner right elbow crease. And then the left arm comes around the knee and interlace your fingers over the shin. It's going to feel, it could be look more like a half boat, but your abdominal muscles aren't doing much work here because you're holding yourself up. Or maybe you're laying, laying back if you're more flexible. And last breath here. You'll release the left leg, lower yourself down. All right, so bring the feet wide at the edge of the mat. Last pose here, arms out to the side. We're just gonna windshield wiper the knees from side to side. So with the feet wide on the mat, you're just rolling to the edges of your feet as the knees come down. Inhale as the knees come up. So exhale as you twist. Inhale, knees up. Exhale, twist the other way. Knees up. Next time your knees come over to the right, stay here. You can keep the feet on the floor or you can bring the right foot to the outside of the left thigh to deepen the twist. Palms are face up, reach out a little longer through the left arm. You can even look over the left arm if you like. And then release the right foot down, knees up, inhale. Knees over to the left, exhale. Stay here if this is enough for you or bring the left foot to the outside of the right thigh. And that's gonna be like a sandbag, lowering the right leg down and deepening the twist. Palms face up, lengthen out longer through the right arm. And if you like, look out over the right arm. Release the left foot down, bring the knees up, inhale, and then just bring, keep the feet wide and just bring the knees together. So you're not kneed, place the hands lightly on your lower abdomen, keep the eyes closed. This position with the legs is going to really widen out the area around the sacrum. And release the low back. So let the shoulders soften down and we have the hands on the low belly here to sense our breath. Sense the rise and fall of the breath to just help you stay more connected to the breath.
Your eyes are closed. Everything is relaxing here. With the weight of your legs pressing against each other just help to soften any muscular effort. With the shoulders really just draped down to the floor. Soften any muscular effort involved in breathing, so it really is just effortless. Feel the breath all the way into the belly. We'll do three more breaths here, nice and smooth and slow. And then you'll reposition the feet so they're under the knees and roll over to one side. Press yourself up to seated. Hands together at the heart. Close your eyes, just drop in, check in. And then bow the head to your heart. And lift your gaze. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope to see you again soon. Namaste.